Ford dropped the hammer last year with the release of their high output power stroke. I'm dropping the hammer. No, you're not. But what you may not have realized is that the standard output power stroke also received some pretty interesting updates, some of which you've probably never heard of, and that's what we're talking about today. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Alex, and today, like you heard, we're gonna discuss all the updates that took place in 2023 with this standard output power stroke. Then we will get into the high output and we'll talk about the true mechanical differences between the high output and this standard output power stroke. In the shop today, we have a 2024 F-250 power stroke and well, this engine is different than the 2020 to 2022 power stroke engines. Ford is not really calling this new generation and the power numbers remain the same, 475 horsepower as well as 1,050 pound-feet of torque, but some internals are different as well as some other critical components which we'll get into. The main reason why this engine was updated in 2023 has to do with the trickle down effect from the high output power stroke engine. Ford claims that in order to streamline production, almost all of the internal updates given to the high output engine were also put into this standard output engine. Therefore, Ford does not have to make two different engines. The first major update is the cylinder heads. They have revised cooling jackets. Ford felt with the high output engine putting that much more boost, um, the cylinder heads can now help to really dissipate a lot more heat. And while going back to what I just said, Ford did not really want to make two sets of cylinder heads. So the standard output now gets the high output cylinder heads on it as well. The second major update is the fueling system. This engine will maintain making a peak injection pressure of 36,000 PSI, which has not changed. But what has changed is the displacement coming from the pump. Ford continues to use the CP4.2 Bosch fuel pump. However, that pump's displacement was increased. My thinking is perhaps they used different cam lobe in that pump in order to pump out more displacement out of that pump to ideally give the high output engine more fueling capacity. The standard output engine once again also received that same update to the pump. Lastly, on the fueling side of things, Ford increased the injector flow rate by about 6%. Again, this is to try and help put more fuel into the high output engine. Once again, the standard output engine gets that upgrade as well. The third update is the lowering of the compression ratio. So the 2020 to 2022 standard output power strokes had a compression ratio of 15.8 to one. Now both the high output and the standard output will be running 15.2 to one. And it does seem a little bit counterintuitive. You'd think you'd wanna run more compression, but as it's been explained to me, a slightly lower compression ratio allows for better utilization of boost and the ability to use more boost to make more power. Ford has also changed up their pistons just a little bit. It looks like they've gone with a little bit more of an aggressive style. Um, they have kept their steel pistons, which I really like. Basically, it's a short steel piston and there's three major advantages to that. One is obviously strength, heat resistance, and heat expansion. Um, basically, steel, it does not expand as much as aluminum, so in theory, you can make the tolerances on the engine much tighter. Um, the other nice thing about what Ford did with their steel pistons, they realized that, well, steel is obviously much stronger than aluminum, and, well, you can use less material, and so, therefore, the new steel pistons in this engine are actually almost the identical same weight as the old aluminum pistons, which is kind of cool. And Ford is the only manufacturer in the HD pickup truck segment to use steel pistons, which again, I really like. The most important update in my mind actually has nothing to do what's under the hood or involving the engine, and no one really seems to be talking about it, but Ford put a brand new emissions system under its truck here, and uh, we're gonna talk about it. Let's get under here. Found it, this is the update I actually want to talk about. So this, I believe, is going to be your ninth fuel injector. This is actually gonna spray fuel into your DPF, and that is going to help this thing regen. And let's talk about why this is a much more advantageous solution than what was previously in the power stroke engines. I imagine most of you guys know what a regen is, but basically when the diesel particulate filters get full of soot, that soot needs to be burned off and that's what a regen does. 
accompanied by extra fuel to get the diesel particulate filter up to temp to burn that soot off. Now there's two methods of getting fuel into your diesel particulate filter. The first method is when the engine actually overfuels itself and that excess fuel goes through the exhaust and enters the diesel particulate filter and burns off the soot. The second method is what all the HD trucks, the big semi trucks that I work on, that's what they use mostly. And this is what Ford has implemented on this truck. Just so you guys can see it better, this is a big Detroit diesel 15 engine, but right here is our fuel injector that goes into the exhaust and then our after treatment right there. And so this is called a dozer unit. You got two coolant lines to help cool, but that is your fuel injector. And that's basically what Ford has done. They have completely circumnavigated the engine and now fuel is dumped directly into the exhaust that goes into your DPF. It's a much better regen solution, in my opinion. The biggest side effect of using the first regen method, which is overfueling the engine, is that you run the possibility of fuel diluting your oil. And if you don't change your oil on a timely manner, if you have too much fuel dilution in the oil, obviously you're just not gonna be protecting your rod bearings, main bearings, engine components, as well as it should, and it can start to actually damage or prematurely wear those components. So with Ford adding, quote unquote, the ninth injector, it completely eliminates that, which I really like. Anyways, I could talk about after treatment until the cows come home, and uh, I don't wanna bore you guys too much, but the last update I found interesting is the oil capacity in this engine actually increased as well. A 2023 and up Power Strokes have an extra two quarts of oil capacity. My guess would be this is going to help keep the oil cooler for the high output engine. Ford has also extended their oil change intervals to 15,000 miles. Again, I would suspect that is due to the extra two quarts also because this engine is no longer over fueling during regens. So there is much less possibility of fuel diluting the oil. So those are the major updates for the 2023 standard output power stroke. If you're more curious, Roman from TFL truck um, talks pretty in depth with a Ford rep about all the updates in terms of the 2023 power strokes. And I'll link that video down below. So now we know the updates on the standard output. What is different about the high output engine and you guys may have suspected there really is not that much different. The major difference is the turbo. Now, lovely Ford and their power strokes. It's a little tight under the hood here and uh, I'd like to show you the turbo, but uh, well, <laughs> it's a little bit buried in there. The size of the turbo between the high output and the standard output are basically identical. But the major difference is the high output turbo has a water-cooled compressor housing. Now, I've changed a lot of turbos throughout my time and well, it's nothing new to have coolant flowing to a turbo. Cummins use it all the time. Actually, they actually even water cool their VGT actuators, but I have never seen a compressor housing water-cooled, which is interesting. Ford says the main priority of the water cooled compressor housing is to cool the actual boost air going into the engine rather than cooling the turbo itself. And Ford correctly points out that as you push more boost into the engine, heat becomes much more of an issue as you compress air, which is what a turbo does. Um, the, the air naturally just gets very hot and we wanna try and cool that air going back into the intake for an array of benefits and if we can't, cool that air down to a specific temperature, um, we start to run into some problems. So this is why Ford added some additional cooling on the high output engine because, well, it's gonna be pushing a lot more boost into the engine and we want to be able to maintain cooling that boost air in order for the engine to run efficiently. So right here is our intercooler. This is a water to air intercooler. So it uses engine coolant to actually cool the intake air going into the engine. Personally, I would prefer to see an air-to-air -air intercooler, but I imagine space is an issue in this very tight compartment. So Ford went with a water-cooled intercooler. Nothing wrong with it, um, but personally, I question why they just didn't put a larger or a more efficient intercooler on the high output engine. I think that'd be a better solution in my opinion, but maybe Ford just wanted to keep one intercooler for each engine and they just figured they could add a little bit of cooling onto the turbo and that's all they needed rather than completely putting a new intercooler in. Maybe they didn't have enough space. 
Who knows? The second and last mechanical difference between the high output and the standard output is, well, the high output's gonna be coming with stainless steel exhaust manifolds and turbo up pipes. And that's it. That is the mechanical differences between the two engines. You get a water-cooled compressor housing and some stainless steel exhaust manifolds. However, another thing to consider is that the high open engine will have a much different tune on it. Just spitballing here, but if let's say you were desperate to have a high output engine, but you didn't want to pay that extra three grand um, on top of the MSRP to get it, you could get a standard output engine. And if you were to, let's say, maybe upgrade the intercooler and put a tune on it, well, you pretty much have a high output power stroke engine. Maybe you even upgrade the manifolds too, and you'd pretty much have exactly what a high output engine is. Some of you guys may think it's a little bit of a waste of money paying that extra $3,000 to get only two extra components on the engine, but I think it does speak volumes about how sturdy of a base platform the Power Stroke is, where you can easily get an extra 150 pound-feet of torque by adding some very simple updates to the engine. And so I think if it were my money, I would be buying the standard output Power Stroke. I think it has a ton of power for what it is, and it basically has all the internal updates that the high output engine already has. So for me, if it was my money, I would go with the standard output Power Stroke, and I think that's all I would need. Overall, I think the Power Stroke engine platform is very, very good. I think it competes very well with the Cummins as well as the Duramax. Obviously, it's not perfect, <laughs> CP4 fuel pump, um, but as a whole, if I own one, I would not be disappointed. As always, guys, if you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you guys on board. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you on the next freaking video.